Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at animating hair and clothing in Character Creator 4 using the embedded soft cloth physics. Let's start off by ensuring that our physics simulation is active. In this case, we've activated both physics and gravity simulation on the character's skirt and hair. For the initial test, we can use any test animation from the animation player for a preview. Currently nothing seems to be working, so let's open up our physics toolbar from the window menu at the top. You'll see that here we can enable rigid body and soft cloth simulation. We can also find the same options in your project settings as well. Now when we play back, we can see the physics simulation results. Ok, let's take a look at how we can use the weight map to modify the soft cloth simulation. With our skirt selected, let's click on the big weight map button in the physics tab. Currently our weight map is a simple gradient fading from black at the top to white at the bottom. The pitch black area of the weight map will not be influenced by soft cloth physics at all, while the strength of the physics simulation result will gradually increase in the whiter areas of the weight map. The layout of the weight map depends completely on the UV layout of your base color or diffuse map. You'll see in each of these examples that the base color map layout is different based on the texture requirements of the mesh that the weight map is being applied to. Therefore the white areas of each of these weight maps have different strengths in different areas. Each item of clothing will be unique based on its UV structure. Since weight maps are one of the most important things in soft cloth simulation, let's take a look at how we can create our own. In this case, let's use a short skirt as an example, being sure to activate the physics before going into the weight map. By default, it will be completely white. The best way to get the most accurate weight map is to first export the source mesh into a 3D tool. In this case, we're going to use Blender. So, with our skirt selected, I'm going to go up and export the selected item as an OBJ. What I'm going to do next is load it up in Blender and simply draw the custom weight map in texture paint mode using a gradient. You'll see right away how it applies to the mesh of the skirt. All you need to do then is go to Image and save that as a custom PNG to load into CC4. After I load in the custom weight map, I can play our test animation and you'll be able to see the fairly accurate results. You can always go back and forth to tweak this more if needed. There are also a number of other animation presets in the animation player that are used specifically for testing out soft cloth physics. Here we can specifically select this turning one to test how our dress and hair look when our character spins around. There are also a number of cloth, hair and wind presets that you can easily apply to your items as well. You can see here with this dress selected, there are some cloth presets, each with their own unique physics parameters preloaded. Notice how the various values in the property section change when I select each preset. In this tutorial, we won't go into the detail or specifics of each parameter, but we encourage you to start with the presets and tweak and experiment on your own time to find the result that best suits your scenario. Here you can see some examples of suitable clothing types for each preset and how they perform. The same thing goes for hair. There are a number of hair presets as well, each with parameters defined to provide an accurate simulation for a different hairstyle. Again, we won't go into detail here, but encourage you to test them out for yourself according to your character's specific hairstyle. Finally, there are wind presets as well. We can see that there is a separate wind section at the bottom containing wind specific parameters that change based on the wind preset we use. Wind simulation is incredibly important when trying to show your soft cloth physics results. Different strength presets can help to showcase hair and clothing results the best. You may also want to consider changing the direction of the wind to mix things up. Wind direction values are based on the world axis which you can see by the left foot of our character. Currently the wind is blowing with a positive x value, meaning that it will go in the direction of the red line and you'll see her skirt flow to the right. If we change that x value to a negative 100, then you'll see that the wind will blow the skirt in the opposite direction. Increasing the Y value to 200 will have the wind blow stronger in the direction of the green Y axis line on our world plane. 
Okay, let's take a look at collision settings next, which are required for natural physics interactions between objects in your scene. You'll see that there are both soft versus rigid and self-collision options in the collision section. If I disable both of those in playback, you'll see some glaring issues, particularly the soft cloth dress going through the rigid body collision shapes on a character's leg. CC4 characters will generally have a set of active collision shapes assigned to their bodies by default. If you want to edit or refine these, you can go to the Attributes tab when your character is selected and activate the Collision Shape tool from there. Here you'll see each collision shape represented with a red mesh. Some body parts will have multiple collision shapes assigned to them just to ensure best results when interacting with other physics-enabled meshes. If you want, you can scale, rotate, and move any of these collision shapes if you feel that you're not getting the best results initially. Let's look at how to bake physics simulation animations next. If you have bake animation enabled in your soft cloth settings, then each time you play back, the soft cloth physics results will be recorded. Once I play back this project with soft cloth simulation enabled, I can then disable it from the toolbar and play back again to see the exact same result has been recorded. Sometimes, particularly in scenarios that have a lot of simulation required, you may want to change from real time to by frame mode in the timeline. This will have a slower initial playback, but will bake more accurate physics results as it takes more time for calculation. Once you're happy with the baked physics results, you can simply go up and render as normal. Feel free to choose the render presets you want and simply hit export. Here you'll see a nice smooth soft cloth physics result that we just baked played back in real time. Okay, finally, let's take a look at how we can export soft cloth physics simulations to external software in Alembic format via iClone. To export your character to iClone, simply use the button from the toolbar. Playback and iClone will utilize the same physics simulation, so you'll have the same results. To start our Alembic export, let's select it from Export in the File menu. Here you'll see a few options you may not have encountered with other export formats. For best results, you'll want to make sure that you split by material, save each mesh as a separate file, and also export textures and merge opacity to diffuse. Simply select a folder and continue on. Once export is complete, you'll find a number of different Alembic files for each part of the character mesh, as well as a texture folder containing all of the textures. Let's import our Alembic files into Blender now to see the results. I'll start by importing in the Alembic ABC file for the skirt mesh. Once I do and play back, you'll see the baked results from iClone play, but only the skirt mesh is present. To assign the texture maps properly, you'll want to go into Shading Mode and create an Image Texture node, plug it into the base color, and load your Diffuse or Base Color Texture Map from the original mesh in iClone. You can repeat the process for the Bump Map and any other texture maps you wish to import in as well. All the other meshes can be imported in the same way, and once you're finished, you can see the completed character result. That's it for this video guys, stay tuned for other CC4 and iClone 8 tutorials on our YouTube channel and learning center, and I'll see you in the next video.